Man, it's an amazing Thursday out here at the Worldwide Headquarters for RecTech. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. As always, this is thir it's Thursday, so you know what that means. It's Product Spotlight, where we highlight an amazing product at RecTech.com. That's mm -hmm. R-E-C-T-E-Q.com. Hey, if this is the first time you've ever heard about us, please, if you would, check us out. Make sure you follow us on all social media. That would just mean the world to us. Um, my name is Jody Flanagan. I'm the rec tech expert here with me, with me uh, on the ones and twos is, is Mr. Chef John Pinnell. <laughs> What's How up? you doing, Chef? What's up, Barbecue Dad? Oh, man. If you guys have any questions, as always, please put those in the comment section down below. We'll try our hardest to get to them. Um, but Product Spotlight is dedicated to letting each and every one of you know what is available at RecTech.com and uh, the sales and specials, because that's all you care about, right? Saving some money, you know? Yeah. yeah. Right, Chef John? Yeah, well, especially around this time of the year. It's all that's about well, especially now yeah. with the state of our economy, Chef yes, John. Okay? That's right. Let's get serious. Let's get serious. For a second here. <laughs> but in all seriousness, we need you guys to smash that share button. We'll give you three seconds to do it. Count us down. Three, Chef John. two, one, smash it. For those of you just now joining us that don't know, that means just hit the share button. We really would appreciate it. Now, I do want to remind you, there are um, some amazing stocking stuffers available at rectech.com mm -hmm. valued at 50, 75 and $100. Um, we've got some rubs and sauces available. Uh, the taste, oh no, that was the most expensive one. The rubs and sauces one. Sorry about that. Um, but you can all check them out at rectech.com. And as always, the, uh, not as always, but right now, uh, the RT-1250, while I stumble over my words, is on sale right now for $150 off the RT-1250 as well as the RT-1250 starter bundle. The RT-2500 is still on sale, $300 off. That RT-2500, um, the BFG, as well as the starter bundle, all on sale at rectech.com. And that's what you ladies and gentlemen uh, pay me to tell you about is the sales and specials going on right now. Um, I also think that they're running that 1070 deal purchase a 1070 with or without the cart, a starter bundle or not, you're going to get a 20 quart icer cooler full free, um, red, white, and blue. So that's mm -hmm. another cool deal. That's cool. You can give that away for a Christmas gift. Yeah. But we've got a lot of new rec tech family members out there. Chef John, Chef Greg, and myself have all been getting a lot of uh, emails and questions via social media. Hey guys, you know, what should I do maintenance wise for my grill? Is there anything I should look out for? Um, you know, what should I do on the regular? So we're here today to go over some maintenance tips and tricks for you. Love it. And I know we lost a bunch of people. A lot of people think that's boring, but <laughs> a lot of folks out there are new. And uh, we wanted to welcome you to the rec tech family, but we also wanted to educate you sure. about the product. This is the continuing education that you get with us and no other retailer out there. You know what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? That's right. All right. Um, so we've got, speaking of an RT-1250, mm -hmm. we've got an amazing uh, piece of equipment right behind me. Okay. I've already taken out the grates. I've already um, actually hit those with a ball of aluminum foil. You know, if you didn't want to purchase the grill grate uh, brush at rectech.com, you can just grab yourself a ball of aluminum foil and uh, hit it. Okay, now uh, what I like to do is uh, either take this uh, Teflon mat, available soon again at rectech.com, and just dump all of that nastiness out of their ship. Yeah, ship John. Just, now, or yeah. you can actually leave it just like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, but get yourself a, a plastic, uh, a hard putty scraper. That way you could scrape some of that excess grease and stuff uh, into uh, your bucket over there. You can also coat it with aluminum foil. I think Sherpa likes aluminum foil. That is his go-to way. But you can also cut it with aluminum foil. Now, if you use the uh, Teflon mats or the aluminum foil, um, make sure you change it after a super greasy cook or when it gets dirty, you know, uh, because that grease can burn. Mm -hmm. Okay, instead of running out, it can burn. And then put some sour, you know, flavorings on your food and, sure. and stuff like that, okay? So we've got our um, drip pan right here. We'll take that bad boy out and I'll show you what's up underneath there. Now, we use this one all the time. This one is nice and dirty for you, ladies and gentlemen, out there. Try to make a mess, Sherpa. So, we've got that cast iron deflector, that super, super thick deflector. That thing is never going to warp, rust, corrode, or fade on you. Man, look at that dirty fire pot. Now, when you hear us talk about fire pot, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we are referring to. Okay, clean out your fire pot. This area right in there is what we're ooh, is what we're uh, talking about okay not down here okay this is the barrel this is the bottom barrel of your grill okay down here and over here that's where you're going to get some ash collection now i know the urge for a lot of folks is to just to get a shop vac and clean all of this stuff out 
Okay, I urge you to leave this stuff down here and only clean it out about once a year. Well, I know a lot of folks are, are freaking out over there uh, on the internet. Why only clean it out about once a year? Well, leaving this ash down here is going to do four beneficial things for you. Four beneficial things for you. It's going to catch a lot of the fly ash that comes out of here, and it's, and it's less likely to wind up uh, in your cooking chamber. Okay, that's the first beneficial thing. The second beneficial thing it's going to do is going to create a layer of insulation. That way, um, your grill loses heat less quickly. Okay, it's also going to help you pick up a lot of the grease and stuff. I'm a super messy cook. The grease will just kind of solidify down there and uh, the ash makes it much, much easier to clean up. Um, the uh, fourth beneficial thing that it does for you is that it reduces the surface area that the grill physically has to heat up, Chef John. Mm -hmm. So therefore the grill will heat up quicker because it has less surface area to heat up. That's right. So Science. only clean out the bottom barrel of your grill about once a year. I only do that on the first day of spring. Yeah. Right? Uh, March 20th, I believe that date is. Mm -hmm. um, now let's go back to the fire pot. Uh, and you can see uh, there's a little bit of fly ash in our chamber here. All I'm doing is taking my hand and I'm kind of knocking that stuff down in there in the bottom. Okay, I'm also going to take my gloved hand, picking up some nitrile gloves available at Rectech.com is really going to save you um, some time and effort and money, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure you pick up some of those. So I'll knock off uh, any uh, creosote that may have accumulated in my barrel uh, on the lid or anything like that. Going to knock it down there. And then uh, our fire pot. When we say clean out your fire pot, again, you don't have to take a shot back, ladies and gentlemen. You just take your hand, scoop out whatever little ash is in there. There you go. And that's all that was in there, right there. My pinkies are going to be dirty. And just throw it down at the bottom barrel of your grill. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I always go, go back in a second time. You know what I'm talking about? Get a little bit extra in there. Okay? And our fire pot is clean. Okay? Now, we have pellets in our hopper. So our auger tube is primed with pellets so when we turn the grill on pellets are going to start to, to dump right on top of our igniter rod okay now if our grill had ran out of pellets okay we would take a handful of pellets and put it right in there priming that fire pot just like that first time you did when you when you brought the grill home um, but easy peasy lemon squeezy that's all you got to do for regular maintenance okay now we do recommend uh following the four to five rule okay clean out your fire pot about every four to five cooks okay and then clean out your hopper let your hopper let it run itself empty about four to five bags of pellets okay what that'll do for you is it's going to reduce the amount of wood dust that collects at the bottom of your auger tube uh and it's going to make your grill less likely of having a burn back okay now it takes years and years of getting all of that dust in there uh to create that situation but we want to prevent prevent that for you so make sure you let your grill run itself empty and i did say that correctly uh, your grill will not be harmed if it runs itself empty okay that's actually what you need to do get all of that wood dust out of there that may have collected that wood dust could get augered into your fire pot and that's just going to burn up just like paper not give you any btus okay that's just you something that you don't want okay but um, the maintenance on these bad boys couldn't be easier easy peasy lemon squeezy now we do have the rectech grill cleaner available mm -hmm. at rectech.com r-e-c-t-e-q which is going to help um, maintain that outside and keep that outside nice and shiny and new it also comes with some scrubbies now the only um uh, direction I'll, I'll tell you about the scrubbies is just make sure you go uh, with the grain of your metal uh, that way you don't get any swirls or anything um, because you can see the, the grain of this bad boy is running sideways. So you would want to rub and stroke uh, in the, um, with the grain. <laughs> Shut up, sir. Yes, Chef John, you got a good question out there. Uh, so, Jody, how, how can you tell when your silicon mat is ready to replace? Uh, when it's dirty. Oh, when it's ready to replace. Yes, sir. Uh, when it becomes very brittle um, and uh, stuff is starting to burn on it. Uh, instead of uh, just falling off. Very good question, though. But it does become very brittle when it's time to replace. Um, and, you, and you also said when your fire, when your hopper runs out of pellets, you need to reprime the fire pot. Uh, if if all of the pellets are emptied out of your auger tube, uh, yes. Or it, if you don't, your grill's just going to air out. That's not a bad thing. It'll show an error code. Um, and then all you do is just hit the power button once. The grill will cut back on and start feeding pellets. Okay? Um, but you don't have to, have to, have to put a handful of pellets down there. That it, it's, it's not uh, absolutely mandatory, uh, but your grill may air out once. You just hit the power button. It'll start back up again, and then eventually it'll start dumping pellets into that fire pot.
If you don't want to get all dirty in there and dump a handful of pellets, you don't have to. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Another good question, Chef John? Yeah, this one's coming from Terry Brody. Terry asks, so we do not need to vacuum the hopper out after the fourth bag. We just let it run out. Yeah, you can just let it run out. Uh, there's no reason uh, to create uh, extra work for yourself. Uh, just let that stuff just run. Just let the auger empty that stuff out. Uh, into the fire pot. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, if you want to go above and beyond, yes, you can stick that shop back down in that hole. Mm -hmm, for sure. Very good question. Um, now, again, on the outside, you know, you know, here um, we're kind of lazy, and you can see here we got some uh, pellets uh, stuck in between our hopper um, and our barrel. Uh, you can easily just take those and just wipe those out. Take your little. <sighs> Little breath of fresh air right there. There you go. Clean that thing right on. Yeah. That um, any other good questions out there, Chef John? Um, no, actually, we have people in the comment section answering some of the questions. Oh, very cool. Too, so. Very cool. Very cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to remind you there are some amazing stocking stuffers available at Rectech.com. Uh, bundles of joy, uh, as they call them on the sidelines, 50, 75, and 100 dollar values. Go check those out at Rectech.com. We got the 1250, the BFG. And the 1070 all on sale right now, recg.com. The best grills in the world, best grills ever. Um, any other good questions on the show? No, sir. All right. If you guys have any other maintenance questions, please just give us a call here at the office, 706 922 uh, Also, want to remind everybody we do have an amazing retail location here in Evans, Georgia, as well as Lehigh, Utah. Congratulations uh, to uh, the employees of our Lehigh, Utah. Um, Location. They won business of the month uh, for this month. So yeah, congratulations. Um, congratulations to all those Lehigh employees. We love y'all. We miss y'all. Uh, y'all are kicking butt out there. Um, but again, we've got two amazing retail locations. Go visit them uh, and check out rectech.com, R E C T E T.com. Chef John and I will be kicking off Monday, Friday, tomorrow. About yeah, boy. Ish. Uh, he'll be doing a salmon dish. I will be doing uh, a pie of sorts. I will let you figure out what kind of pie I'll be doing. Make sure you check us out live. Uh, it'll be a great day from everybody here at the Rectech Worldwide Headquarters. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Where are we going to see them at, John? At the Rectech. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Rectech Lifestyle. Set it. Uh, come get it. You know. When the sun starts going down. Yeah, Rob. Live your life the way you like. No green.